Hi, Taurus. Welcome to your December 2017 Astro Update. It's Raina here. And for you, Taurus, there's a lot of energy, a concentration of energy in the eighth house of sex, death, and other people's money. Now, what's interesting about this is that you rule in the universal chart, the second house of earned income. And the opposite house in the opposite sign is your complementary sign, Scorpio. And so the scorpionic stuff is what colors that eighth house and what is in play for the month of December because the sun is here until the solstice time of the 21st. And Venus, your ruler, goes into this sector on the 1st of December, almost like heralding the month of December as this time of um, having the bounty of what that house represents. Because other people's money, to me, a lot of times deals with inheritance issues because death is also a, a facet of the eighth house. So you put the two and two together and you get inheritance. But it can be if you're married, your spouse's money, and how does that impact the relationship? You know, um, Venus can bring money wherever she goes. So in the eighth house, you may be benefiting from other people's money in some way. And the other um, thing that's happening is a Mercury retrograde in this sector. And this starts on the third of the month until the 22nd, right before Christmas. Okay. Now, Mercury in the eighth house can be like, okay, whoa, we were going to sign this contract about the will, the probate. And we just realized, look, look at what's happening here, this thing that we didn't know before. And there may be some kind of review, there may be something that has to be hashed out more. And um, there may be some kind of uh, person contesting it, some, some, something happening that's making you rethink something along these lines. But it, it, Mercury does go direct on the 22nd, and things should proceed more smoothly, especially when it gets out of its shadow, I would say, uh, in the new year. And, and of course, you know, with Christmas, there's going to be a lot of uh, stuff going on. So a lot of times when you're trying to make something happen, there are a lot of holidays, there are a lot of days off, and it's really, um, we end up, you know, the last 10 days of the month, pretty much saying, okay, I guess this is going to have to wait until the new year. But um, the other thing that is uh, significant about this Mercury retrograde is that on the very same day, there's going to be a full moon in Gemini. This is the third again, remember, and this is going to be in your second house of earned income. Now, personally speaking, I don't uh, get too hung up about the idea of earned income. I think that the second house is a money house where you can expect to receive some sort of money. Sometimes it can be from money that you did not directly earn. And I can vouch for that. I had an experience where I had Jupiter in the second house and I did get a lot of money, uh, at least, you know, relatively speaking for me. And it wasn't money that I earned. It was actually from some kind of uh, stocks that I sold. So Let's just um, make it more generalized and say that's the money house. Now, that's also the house that you rule uh, and Venus, your ruler, rules. So uh, having a full moon here is particularly significant for a Taurus in that regard. Um, I feel that full moons are very uh, are times of great abundance because it's it's there's a pregnancy, a fertility, and... I tend to see them as gains, not losses. Um, there is the added interpretation of full moons being times when things are brought away. But um, I don't see that. 
I think that it's a good time if you're looking at timing issues to let go of things that don't serve you. So it is possible that you may choose as a way to enhance your life to stop working at a certain place because it's affecting you in other ways. But I don't think that you are going to necessarily be without an income. I do think too, that this could be some kind of bonus or some kind of money that has been coming to you for a while. On the ninth, Mars goes into your opposite sign of Scorpio. So that's your seventh house of committed partnership, marriage or the equivalent. And Mars is the god of war, so you do the math. No, it doesn't have to be something bad, but it could be something related to a, a legal case because the seventh house can deal w with legal matters. And you may be uh, having to fight for something, and it could have something to do with that uh, will uh, situation that's during the Mercury retrograde, something going over old ground, perhaps, but it can be some kind of conflict with your significant other. So be careful. Um, during the holidays, sometimes uh, the irony is that holidays can add stress instead of being as festive as we would like them to be. So uh, just keep that in mind. Now, Mercury retrogrades can bring people back into our lives. They can try to contact us. So if you're separated from a spouse and they kind of rear their head, uh, call you up, you may get back into fighting mode. Um, or maybe, maybe you thought you had finally gotten rid of them. Maybe it's an ex, <laughs> but it's not, usually it'll be somebody that you're currently in a relationship with. But perhaps you have decided that you're going to get divorced and you had gone your separate ways, but you hadn't gotten the um, divorce decree. And this person wants to start things up with you because it's the holidays. Who knows? But um, the other thing, too, about this is that it can simply mean that you are very active with clients because the seventh house can be people that you work with on a one on one basis. So that might also be very good for your finances. Then we have a new moon in Sagittarius on the 18th, and this is in that eighth house. So that could be some kind of uh, agreement that has um, come come to regarding some uh, matter of um, money re related to wills or child support, what have you. And there's a new beginning in that area. Or if you've been fighting with a, a spouse, you come to a deeper level and, and you're able to um, really get deeper into your relationship with them. And it's not just uh, shallow. Saturn goes into Capricorn the very next day in your ninth house, which deals with the higher mind, travel, um, university level education, or also the other thing that is a biggie is, um, your philosophy. This is the God house. So, um, it could very well be that some tourist people in the next two and a half years are going to be going back to school. Even if you're middle aged, you may really have always wanted to get, uh, your graduate degree or even just your, it could be like your, your bachelor's degree. Um, it could also be that some people want to take up a yoga teacher training or something along those lines where you are, uh, you're doing something productive that has to do with spiritual pursuits that you can use for many years to come. Because that's what Saturn is all about. It's about utility. It's not about doing something frivol <laughs> frivolously. Uh, it's early in the morning. And um, it's about lasting impact. So, uh, you know, Saturn only uh, transits one sign or one house for 30 year, uh, every 30 years, for two and a half years. So it, you, whatever you lay the groundwork in in this area, it can pay dividends for you in the future. And the sun enters a sector two days later. 
Um, so the sun is your sense of self and you become a lot more businesslike, a lot more serious. Maybe you were kind of like in that party mode when you're, when the sun was in Sagittarius and now you're becoming uh, much more grounded and ready to accomplish things a lot more serious on Christmas day, the 25th, Venus goes into the ninth house as well. So now we have three planets in that ninth house and Venus in the ninth can even indicate, uh, meeting somebody from a, a different country and falling in love with somebody from a different, um, a uh, walk of life, or especially if, if it's from an actual physical location that is far away from yours. Um, there could even be some kind of travel that you engage in, in the next, uh, couple of years. And that might be, especially if you're going to do it right away, that might be where you meet the love of your life. And with Saturn in this sector, it's like, this is a, a keeper. This is somebody that um, will be with you for um, a very long time. Saturn rules old age. So Saturn isn't about like flash flashes in the pan. It's about endurance, enduring things. Okay, Taurus. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you would like a private reading, I'm offering 20% off of all of my readings, including my natal chart interpretations, which this type of reading is the closest mirror to. And um, these are um, especially fun because they look at your personality traits as well as your talents and maybe some of the patterns that hold you back. And I, I personally believe that even just having somebody that doesn't know you like say these things that are, you know, are true about yourself can free you. Um, without, I don't think working on yourself means necessarily just, you know, toiling away and obsessing about yourself. I think, um, a lot of things we can, uh, eradicate from our natures that are not serving us by simple, by simply having them brought to awareness on a conscious level. And, um, these readings also combine uh, the personality analysis with your um, hot spots in love, in career, uh, earning capacity, your work life for the next 12 months. And um, that's kind of uh, cool too. So all of my readings are 20% off. You can see the link below. And otherwise, have an awesome December. Bye.